So this is the, an extension of what we call the big dig. And as I pointed out, um, the product coming out of there has that strange speckled... That oh, that is a beautiful piece. Can you roll it around so we can see? Oh, see those little tiny appetites? That's typical of what comes out of the big dig. And uh, Cassandra and Chad have moved uh, further along in the big dig. And this is the kind of stuff they're bringing up. That is an absolutely beautiful specimen. It's a piece to be really proud of. Anything, anything else really good, Chad? Oh, I so. Too many. Too, Too many. many. I'm coming down to have a look, dude. <laughs> see the top of that? Oh, there's a find. Good job, my man. Pretty happy with well that. Well done. And you say you got another piece in the car as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Nice big garden. Still right. from the Tremolite spot, eh? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, you're a contender. There's another Miles gentleman who walked out, out with a piece that was, I don't know how he carried it, it was so huge. Oh, yeah. Let me get me there, Mark. Oh, my goodness. Looks like a little microcline cluster, a little amphibian. How'd you find that, dude? Just, just poking and prodding. I went down to the swamp. We haven't spent much time at the swamp. So. Roll it over so you can see. The hey, check this out. Look at this, right to the shoulder. Wow. It's going all the way back on a slant. I can see back, way back where you are. Okay. We used to say we only bring you fun at Dark Star. We're bringing you science as well. Um, our observations, I mean, we have spent so much time working in these uh, calcium vein dikes that um, over time, I, I believe we've probably come to learn things that others maybe never learn, and I greatly doubt you'll ever find this kind of information, be it on the internet, in books, or whatever. Um, it's just plain old, hardcore experience. Mark, you and I have been talking last night while we are at the camp, sitting there in the dark there, and uh, you were talking about the Titanite, right, and your observations. Um, first thing was, um, you mentioned something about the difference between Titanite Hill and this particular location, like what was that about? I was just telling you, um, Titanite Hill, it seems to exist everywhere. Titanite, what? you Why dig though? here, you dig there. Well, you pointed out it just all slid downhill. It did. Here, it's specifically at a contact zone where the calcite touches the wall, they grow in the wall, and then they fall off. Like the calcite here contains zero, um, zero Titanite. Oh, but absolutely. the walls are full of them, or straight down off the wall where they fell. It's a uh, it's a bonanza. So it's been dig, cast on to dig, 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 and then dig some that more. Is That's it. how you figure things out. How many out like Titanites that. did we find in total in that Hubbard's hole so far? Do you think? It's over a hundred. A hundred and thirty we counted last night. I think night. yeah, yeah one hundred twenty five, one hundred thirty. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, perfect. I mean, what was it last Friday? I got what thirty two myself. Me yeah. and Kathy just sweeping the bottom of the floor out. Fantastic. So it's right at the contact zone. And it was right on one on the side wall. of the fissure because you yeah. have tight night or a tight nights in the wall on one side. Yeah. And it was right below is where they are. Other side of the wall. It's that appetite. specific. Yeah. That Pacific. There's like a line. Oh, wow. Right there. It's wild. I have an absolute phobia with snakes, so I'm walking along, right? And, I don't know, call this therapeutic or something. He's a creepy, creepy looking creature. Look at him. I don't know what kind of snake that is. I don't know, can you see it? I can't even see it in this light. Yeah, you see him moving? Yep, guys, fall's coming on. Makes for a really beautiful sort of harlequin pattern in the evening when the sun gets low and it's shining through the leaves. So, so slightly malformed. Okay. I did bring you a sample though. Oh, good, good, let's check it out. Okay, what's, oh, oh. Uh, that's not all that malformed, that's not bad at all. Yeah, I wouldn't, I, uh, Well, you know my standards. Well, that's why I brought it home for you. Uh, oh, thank you, that was very kind. No way. And I knew you'd like that. Oh, yeah. That'll clean up all right. Feldspar. It's actually in good condition. When you get weeping, it, it's actually nice and greasy. Hey, man, that's really kind of you. Thank you. Okay, check this one out. So that hole I was digging and just starting to get the the nice little, uh, I think they were amphiboles um, that I showed you. Check this out. This came out just beforehand. So this is the gent who was digging it, but uh, he started it off and got all the hard work done for me. So thus far, Hubbard's Hole has been uh, the most generous Titanite uh, location on our Dark Star claim. 
Um, as of last weekend, it's yielded over 150 titanite specimens, or at least those we've identified as titanite, um, uh, for eagle rock hounds. Uh, so, I mean, we have a lot of people coming in asking us, hey, can we work Hubbard's Hall? Uh, at this time, Hubbard's Hall uh, stretches over 40 feet. Uh, on the east side, it drops to a depth of about 8 feet, and then it hits a calcite plate. Uh, on the western side, it's already below 18 feet, and it's still dropping. We use a TV antenna to actually access it, uh, like a, a broken triangular TV antenna tower, which you climb down into the bottom of the pit. So um, excavation is made a lot more difficult by an incredibly fine powdery dust that fills the whole area. And also it's a level of claustrophobia that would intimidate a snake. So. Recently, as one visitor put it, I've spent a good proportion of my life underground and I'm not going down there. And uh, an important word about the Dark Star claim, your success is in proportion to how much you dig. And yes, I get it. You don't necessarily want to dig in a very claustrophobic environment. Um, we will make sure wherever you dig is safe. But the point of the matter is, digging is crucial to success on the Dark Star claim. So, during a recent Dig, Liz, who is one of our regular guests, pointed out the possible connection between titanite and anatase, which can form Ooh. as a byproduct of titanite alteration. This observation sparks some lively speculation amongst us. Uh, in other words, um, you know, are we really just uh, excavating titanite, or are we getting other really interesting possibilities coming out that look like titanite or are formed of titanite? So we welcome anybody with knowledge or even just an idea to chip in at this point. Put something down in the comments. Help us understand the transition between uh, titanite and anatase or any of its other possible uh, products that it can form. What we do know at this time is that titanite can transform through natural weathering or hydrothermal alteration into rutile, brookite or anatase all with the TiO2 chemistry. But, differing in shape, all of these differ in shape and internal structure. Sometimes the outward crystal shape is preserved in a molecule by molecule replacement. The opposite concept is polymorphism, where the chemistry remains constant, but entirely different structures are produced. Uh, so an example of that would be carbon forming as either diamond or graphite looks different and entirely different properties as well. <laughs> so I've noticed that some of our titanite specimens show subtle changes in luster along facet edges. At around 90 degrees Celsius, titanite can re-precipitate uh, and in doing so, redistribute the crystal's titanium content to the outside of the actual crystal. So, I mean, when you look at certain specimens, you'll see along the facet edges of the crystal, uh, it seems to be a lot more worn or dull, and yet at the center, it's very lustrous. I mean, I'm wondering if that's what's going on. And again, I don't know everything, right? Um, ultimately, these surface changes may signal the onset of polymorphic alterization, or alteration, where the crystal's form and properties evolve while its chemistry remains the same. Either way, some kind of change is taking place there. So, um, a check on Mindat confirms that uh, anatase has indeed been found on that particular claim, which is so close to our property, no more than, let's say, a diagonal of about 100 meters from our claim boundary to their old claim boundary. So, I mean, if you find it in one spot, you're going to find it in another spot, right? So, um, photos on Mindat's site show that their crystals uh, of anatase are generally uh, a musty, sort of yellowish color, right? you know, described as honey yellow by some, right? Um, and I've personally seen similar crystals in tailings at Hubbard's Hole, though I unthinkingly dismissed them as unimportant to what we were doing, but in reality, um, they are highly sought after collective specimens. And uh, I really kicked myself for, for ignoring them at the time, right? Um, so uh, Liz says, uh, according to her, because she was speaking to another gentleman about it as well, and uh, she's saying that a lot of these crystals are sort of a, um, a 
dull, a dull bluish, a steely bluish color, right? And indeed, we've got lots of crystals just like that. So most of our crystals we're finding are like a, a beer bottle brown, brownish black in color. And you know, the more transparent or translucent they become, the more this beer bottle color is shining out in layers. And oddly with, I don't know if there's a connection here, but when we're looking at anatase, there are these striations that go across the prism faces. And I'm wondering if there's some linkage between the, what appears to be striations within the app, actual um, uh, Titanite. Not sure, just firing it out there as a theory. So in some cases, Anatase may retain the Titanite's original snub-nosed disc shape, while in others it transforms into tabular, octahedral, prismatic forms. Octahedral Anatase crystals are typically indigo blue to black, and they often arise in mica schist, and we have no shortage of that, as country rock on our claim. Flattened or prismatic varieties exist as well. By contrast, they appear honey yellow to brown and can resemble xenotime, which is one of the rare earth ores. Well-formed anatase comes as tetragonal pyramids that often display those crosswise striations that I had mentioned along their faces of their crystals. Uh, it's kind of reminiscent when you think about it of, say, sapphire, because a lot of times sapphire spindles have that same thing. However, the luster ranges from adamantine to steely, and the tips of those octahedral crystals are also sometimes flattened, not coming to a point. In fact, they're usually flattened. Going forward, I'm going to be paying a lot better attention to what comes out of Hubbard's Hole, and I think uh, this Friday, as we're going up, in fact, I'm going up Wednesday as well, um, we're, I'm immediately dropping down to scour around the tailings that have been left around Hubbard's Hole to look for anatase. And thanks to Liz, and thanks to the supervisor who usually comes with Liz, thank you very much.